different reactions, really. You know, in Ukraine, ever since General Sur Surovikin, Russia's top general in Ukraine, said that difficult decisions would have to be made regarding Kherson, people in Ukraine have been wondering what exactly he meant by that. And one analysis that's been put forward lately by Ukrainian military spokespeople is that they may be planning some sort of a scorched earth policy in the city, destroying entire housing estates. So that's something that they're worried about on the one side. On the other side, they're also being very clear that they don't believe Russia really has completed its evacuation of Kherson, in the sense that there are still plenty of people there. There have been rather alarming reports that some people in have been told by Russian occupation authorities there that if they don't leave, they may be considered enemy sympathizers and uh, have to bear the consequences of that. Very ominous, but always very ambiguous language coming from the Russians and actually quite ambiguous interpretations being put forward by the Ukrainians as well, which is in part deliberate, as the defense minister told Western journalists two days ago, we don't want them to know that we know what they're up to and we don't want them to know what we're planning either. And so there is, to some degree, a deliberate policy of misinformation. Meanwhile, fighting, of course, continues both closer to Kherson, down between the Ukrainian-held city of Mykolaiv and Kherson city itself, and closer to where I am now in the northern parts of Kherson region. I'm just to the north of Kherson region, which lies to the south of Krivirig, where I am now. Um, Ukrainians are trying to consolidate their control over the areas that uh, they reclaimed in that northern part of Kherson region. But they say that every time they liberate somewhere, it comes under Russian fire, and uh, it's quite a slow process stabilizing control over these areas. Yeah, and we have been hearing that the Ukrainian counteroffensive, it's been slowing somewhat in recent days. Tell us a little bit more about the current situation on the eastern front lines. Well, I think on the eastern front line, Ukrainian counteroffensives are perhaps going a little bit faster than they are on the southern front line, at least, in the northern part of the eastern front line. Anyway, that's uh, just to the east of Kharkiv region, going into Luhansk region. There, the Ukrainian governor of Luhansk region, Sergei Haidai, says that uh, the Ukrainian armed forces now have full fire control of the strategic road between Svatove in the northern part of Luhansk region and Kremina, which is basically a suburb of Severodonetsk, a very big city in Luhansk region that the Russians took control of in the early summer and which the Ukrainians very much, of course, want to get back.